So we're starting unit seven, exponential functions. Uh, first topic is 7.1, characteristics of exponential functions, found on pages 334 to 345 in your text. Uh, curriculum outcome is 30.9, demonstrate an understanding of logarithms, including evaluating logarithms, relating logarithms to exponents, deriving laws of logarithms, and solving equations and graphing. Now, I know none of those things say exponential functions, but if you don't understand exponential functions, you will have a real tough time understanding logarithms. So we're going to do a little warm-up unit before we start our logarithmic unit. Our lesson objectives today, number one, to find out what an exponential function is and what a normal exponential function looks like when graphed, to be able to identify some characteristics of exponential functions, and to use the equation of an exponential function to answer some real-world problems. So an exponential function is one in which your variable x is in the exponent. They can be written in the form y equals c to the x. So our base will always be a number and our exponent is always our variable. So we're going to take a look at two different types of exponen exponential functions. Sorry, One is where c is greater than 1. So our base is going to be greater than 1. And the other one is where our base is between 0 and 1. We'll also take a look at the following characteristics of each type of exponential function. We're going to look at the domain and range. We're going to look at the x and y intercepts. We're going to look at whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And we're going to look at the equation of a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we're in GeoGebra here and we're going to take a look at a couple of functions. First two we're going to compare is f of x equals 2 to the x and g of x equals 3 to the x. So here's a blue function which is f of x equals 2 to the x. As you can see here, if you wanted to, you could sketch one of these yourself just by making a table of values. So if we let x equal 1, then we would get a value of 2 to the 1, which is 2. So when x equals 1, y equals 2. Uh, when x equals th uh, 2, then y should equal 4. And there we go, right at the point 2 comma 4. If x equals 3, y would then equal 2 to the third power, which is 8 and etc, etc, etc. If our x happens to be um, a number less than 1, so say um, like a half, then we're looking at the square root of 2, because it's 2 to the power of a half, and the square root of 2 is probably somewhere around 1.5. And if x equals 0, then we have the 2 to the power of 0, which is always 1. So um, this is the function of f of x equals 2 to the power of x. Uh, g of x, which is 3 to the power of x, looks a lot the same, I guess. Um, we still go through the point one, 0, comma 1, because if we let x equal 0, then anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. And the only thing that's different now is a little bit steeper, because um, as we put in values for x, it is now 3 squared and 3 to the third power and 3 to the fourth power, so it increases at a sharper rate. So those are our two functions um, that have a base that is a, a, a number that is greater than 1. So let's take a look at some of the things we said we were going to look at. We said we're going to look at the domain and the range. Well, the domain in both cases is uh, it goes all the way to the left and it continues to increase, but it goes all the way to the right. So we know that the domain is x, e, r. The range, however, is a little bit different. Um, well, it's the same for both functions, but the range, it never crosses this horizontal line, which is x equals, or sorry, y equals zero. So the range is just y is everything that is greater than zero. It can't be equal to zero, because um, th these two lines, as you can see, get really, really close, but never cross. The other things we're looking for are x and y intercepts. Well, we have our y intercept. Our y intercept is um, at 0, comma 1. And there are no x intercepts because these two graphs will never cross this horizontal line. These two functions are both increasing. And it says the equation of a horizontal asymptote is what we're looking for. And this horizontal asymptote happens to be at y equals 0. Remember, an asymptote is just a line that a graph does not cross. Um, these sort of functions are called exponential growth functions. So things that grow exponentially are um, bacteria. So something that will double or triple over and over and over again. 
Um, if you think of like a phone tree, when people make a phone tree, those are examples of exponential growth. So now we're gonna look at two other functions and that's when our base is actually less than uh, one. So we're gonna look at h of x, which is a half x. And you can notice that it changes a little bit from when f of x equals two x. Um, and we're gonna look at j of x equals 0.1x. So both of these functions, um, they both still go through that point zero comma one because x is a, when x is equal to zero, anything raised to the power of zero is one. So it doesn't matter what you raise to the power of zero, it's always gonna be one. And again, um, one of them is steeper than the other one. And a lot of the things are still the same in the sense that there's still a horizontal asymptote. The only thing that is different in this case is that these functions are decreasing. Um, the domain is still the same. Domain still X, E, R all the real numbers, your range is still the same, y happens to be greater than a zero. It just happens to be decreasing this time and there's still a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And these are called exponential decay functions. And things that d decay exponentially are a lot of radioactive substances will always decay exponentially. So for example, we call that a half-life so something that is decaying uh, radioactively has a half-life. And that's just the amount of time that it takes before half of that substance is gone. For example, something like uranium happens to have a half-life of 13 million years. Whereas something like some forms of iodine only have a half-life of a couple days. So um, each of these would be described with a different sort of exponential function. So here's an example, it says, find the equation of the exponential function shown below. So it's just a picture of an exponential function. Um, you can see that um, it, it goes to the point zero comma one again, and then it goes to the point one comma five and two comma 25. So one way to, to kind of figure out the equation of this sort of thing is you could just do a little table of values of the points that you know. So we know that the point um, zero comma one is on there like it is for every exponential function. And one comma five and two comma 25. So remember that we're talking about y should equal something to the power of x. So hopefully you can take a look at these numbers and determine that that something has to be five. Because if we take five when we raise it to the power of one, we get five. If we take five when we raise it to the power of two, we get 25. So that's just one way of just taking a look at the points and seeing what they represent and then you can sort of build your function from there. So here's our final example. It says, under ideal circumstances, a certain bacteria population triples every week. This is modeled by the following exponential graph. So zero comma one, this is the starting time. There happens to be one um, bacteria. This is the number of bacteria. This is probably somewhere in the thousands or millions, but they're just representing it with a one. After one week, there happens to be three times as many. After two weeks, there's now nine times as many. After three weeks, you would be all the way up to 27 times as many, etc., etc., etc. So it says, what are the domain and range of this function? Well, this specific function has a domain where x is going to be everything greater than or equal to zero because we started at zero. And your range is going to be everything that happens to be greater than one. So that's just looking at the function, looking at the graph of it, and finding the domain and range. It says write the exponential growth model that relates the number of bacteria to the time in weeks. Well, our bacteria is equal to, we said it triples every week, so it would be three to the power of t. So when, if t equals your week, then um, it would be three to the power of one after the first week, three to the power of two after the second week, etc., etc. So now it's asked us to determine approximately how many days it would take for the number of bacteria to increase to eight times the quantity on day one. So we're really looking for um, when is this going to be eight times as big. So what we have to do here, well you don't have to, but your best bet is to probably just throw in a, a table of values. So you have your time and you have your B for bacteria. So we know that at a day of zero there is one and at a week of one, there happens to be three. At a week of two, there happens to be nine, etc. We want it to be eight times the, the quantity. Well, 
8 times the quantity is somewhere in between 1 and 2. So really you're going to be using a little bit of trial and error. So we're going to try and find out what uh, the bacteria is if 3 was, say, to the power of 1.8. We know it has to be less than 2. So 3 to the power of 1.8 is 7.22. Well, that's not 8 times as big. So we want to go to the next point, which is 3 to the power of 1.9, maybe. That happens to be 8.06. So it's 8.06 times as big after 1.9 weeks. Well, it says that we need that in the number of days. So we need to find out what 1.9 weeks is. So 1.9 times 7 happens to be 13.3 days. Or if you want it to be specific, approximately 13 and a, um, a third days, which is 13 days and 8 hours. So in summary, it says exponential functions all have the variable in the exponent. We talked about that. We know that an increasing exponential function will have a base that is greater than 1, and those are called exp exponential growth functions. Decreasing exponential functions have a base that is between 0 and 1, and they're called exponential decay functions. And you can use exponential functions to model some real-world situations, and as always, sketches help. So your assignment is on pages 342 to 345. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.